How's everybody doing today? Are we having fun? Yeah? I'm having fun. I'm having fun on stage. So when they asked me to do a TED Talk, I was like, hell yeah, it's a TED Talk. Let's do it. I watch them all the time. It's a huge motivator. It's a great way to start your week. I do cheesy stuff on social media. Hashtag Motivation Monday. A lot of the times it's TED Talks. Now, my name's Cody Barbo, and when they told me that it's TEDx SDSU, I was like, I love SDSU. I'm an Aztec for life. They also said that the theme for this year is what's your biggest fear? My biggest fear right now is standing on the stage. I'm freaking out. My hands were shaky a little bit. My second biggest fear is that the three of them are staring at my butt for the next 10 minutes. Right? <laughs> so in reality, when I really thought about it, because I, I had a few weeks to think about this, I think that my biggest fear has been failure. How many of you, just by a show of hands, have failed at some point in your life? So if your hand's not up, I know this is being on the internet, when people are in between their cat watching videos, they're gonna be like, I know that person. So yeah, so failure is something that we all share. It's very common in our lives. And it's one of those things that we don't talk about enough. We never talk about failure. So I wanna highlight two stories that I think, especially the college kids over here will connect with, but I think my entrepreneurship story, a lot of you will connect with. So where do I start? Back in the fall of 2007, I was a tiny, long-haired, hair-to-my-shoulder freshman from Huntington Beach, California. And I came to San Diego State with every intention of being the best Aztec that I could be. And I wanted to break out of my shell. I wanted to get involved. So I got a job at the Apple Store. I started working with student government. I got involved in Greek life. I started to realize that running for leadership roles was kind of my jam. I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. So year after year, I got bigger responsibilities, bigger leadership roles, and I was fortunate enough as a senior, as John mentioned, to become Associated Students President, the voice and face of San Diego State. 30,000 students strong, representing us at a local, state, and federal level, and it was really cool. I mean, I had the title of CEO of running a $23 million nonprofit corporation, 80 employees, 1,000 part-time employees, and we facilitated the construction of the new $100 million Aztec Student Union. I was on top of the world. But one of my biggest successes was also my biggest failure. So when I was finishing up as AS president, I still had a semester left at state. I was a student. I forgot I was a student. I was like, hey, this is really cool. Um, I got to go to school still. So in that process of summer going into the fall, I had a lot of good, a lot of really good things happen and some not so good things happen. I had the death of a close friend, a student here at state. I had another close friend attempt suicide, and I started to lose focus. I started to lose my motivation, clarity, started to feel stuck. I didn't know what I wanted to do because I didn't have that next leadership role to run for. I didn't have a job lined up, and I started to become embarrassed that I was becoming a failure. And I hit a low point in my life because at 21, going on 22 at this point, I had never been depressed before. Never been depressed. I've always been an optimistic, motivated guy. But for the first time ever, I was depressed, and it sucked. And I didn't turn to the people that I cared most about. So it took, it took something to get me out of this rut. It took my family, it took my girlfriend, and it took two of my best friends to call me up one day and say, hey, Cody, why don't you come get some drinks with us in Pacific Beach? I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds fun. So I go down to Pacific Beach, I meet up with two of my best friends, Matt Cecil and Rob O'Keefe, also student leaders here who some of you may know. And they're like, hey, come out to the bar. So I go to the bar, and instead of getting drinks, they staged an intervention at a bar in Pacific Beach. It was not the ideal place. <laughs> it was terrible. It was terrible. But it needed to happen because here I was, completely lost, completely unmotivated, lack, lack of focus altogether. And they recognized that. These are two of my best friends that actually believed in me enough to intervene and say, Cody, what the hell's going on, man? So I told them what went on. I told them about the death. They knew about the death. It was a friend of theirs. They didn't know about the friend that had attempted suicide. And there was another couple factors that they also didn't know about. And I think that I feared sharing these with them because of fear of embarrassment, fear of judgment. And I shouldn't feel that way with my best friends. But luckily enough, they asked me, Cody, what motivates you? What, what gets you excited? What gets you passionate? And I was like, technology. I worked at the Apple store as a freshman. I'm a low-key geek on the side. And they said, why don't you do something with tech? I was like, that's actually a pretty good idea. And the timing was perfect because I had another friend, Ethan Frame, who was a student here, who pitched me on this app idea. It was absolutely brilliant. And it was before Snapchat existed. It was very similar. 
had a lot of key features that I think would have been successful. So I was like, yes, let's do this. So this is where kind of story number two emerges. Getting out of my rut, getting motivated, getting fired up again. But this transition into entrepreneurship and the startup life, this is what I'm about to tell. So for the next year and a half, we focus on building a great team, building a great product. And we were working pretty damn well. And, and so much so that we started to attract the venture capital community towards us. And being 22, getting hundreds of thousands of dollars thrown at you is a pretty exciting thing, right? So it sounds like things are going well. So how is this a failure? I was so focused and motivated on the business, we were so head down, focused on the business succeeding, <coughs> that I forgot about my personal finances. So much so that I was like, I need to go get a job. As much as I am all in on this project, I have to go out there and work to make some side money to pay the bills, to pay rent, to make, make ends meet. And through that process, I had to walk away from the thing that I just poured in a year and a half of my life into. And it was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make because I'm not a quitter. But I came to the realization that it needed to be done for me to continue to succeed as a person, just to live. And it's through that process that a failure became a success. Because once I started working, I started making some money, I had more ideas flowing. Every entrepreneur, you got a million ideas. I know John's got a million ideas. And the crazy thing is, is that I came up with this idea that I was like, this needs to happen. And as John had mentioned, other John had mentioned in the beginning, I came across this opportunity for industry, this LinkedIn for the restaurant service hospitality industry. And I can tell you confidently today that it is going so well and it's been so much easier and so much smoother to get to this point in my life because of that experience with the first startup. So while it may have been a failure, it may be perceived as a failure, I actually view it as one of my biggest successes. And it's these successes in life that we talk about. I mean, I'll be the first to admit it. I took a photo of this stage. It's really cool. And I posted it on my Instagram today. But we live in this world where perception is perfection. We only want to post the competition we win. We only want to post the leadership role we take. We only want to post that music festival or concert or something really awesome that we did. And the perception to everyone in our network that we don't hang out with on a daily basis is that, wow, that guy's life or that girl's life is perfect. And that's not reality. Reality is, is that the most successful leaders, successful politicians, the people that we admire most, they all had their flaws. And that's why I wanted to title my talk today, Don't Be Perfect. Because when you pursue perfection, you get lost. You get lost because you don't celebrate your wins. You only focus on your failures. And we want to celebrate the wins in life. And that's where I'm kind of trying to bring this all back together. What's the call to action today? Like, what's the one thing I want to take away from Cody's speech? Don't be perfect perfect. And the reason why is that you need to learn to celebrate your wins, share your story, talk about your failures. I think that's the key point, is to talk about your failures with the people closest to you. Because life is too short not to have fun. So don't be perfect, and thank you for your time. <laughs>